of the old trees, I see the house again. It sits there waiting for me. Silent, malignant, a place of unspeakable horror. There is no one there now. On a mailbox beside the driveway, I can make out the name of the people who lived there once. Tierney. But the Tierneys must have all gone away a long time ago. And the house stands like a moldering tombstone to a world that died. There is an old-fashioned knocker on the door. An unseen hand always opens the door for me. I always go up the shadowy stairway as if I know exactly where to find the answer to what has drawn me here. a little unmarked door and some unearthly power swings it open to receive me. I look up that narrow dusty stairway and for a moment that is so brief, so filled with terror that my mind cannot hold on to it, I know why I had to come to this place. <laughs> Did I go up the stairs this time, Doctor? No, it was the same as before. You almost bring yourself to see the truth, and then you... But what truth? All I know is that death in its most hideous form waits for me at the top of those stairs. That's not all you know, Mrs. Justin. You hold the answer deep within your own mind. Consciously, you've forgotten it. That's the way the human mind works. Whenever something is too unpleasant, too shameful for us to entertain, we reject it. We erase it from our memory. But the imprint is always there. Nothing is ever really forgotten. But don't all of us do things we're ashamed of? It wouldn't be human if we hadn't. And I'm quite human, Doctor. But there's nothing in my past that I couldn't tell my husband or that I haven't told you. I have never seen that house except in my dream. I, I can't connect it with any, any place or, or any one I've ever known. You're an orphan? Yes. You've lived most of your life here in Switzerland? Yes. I was sent here as a child for my health. Incipient tuberculosis from which you made a complete recovery. I'm strong as an ox now. Those uh, two years in the sanitarium, not a very happy time, was it? I don't have a very clear recollection of them now. These nightmares resumed about six weeks ago. Yes. You've been married about the same length of time. You're on the wrong track there, Doctor. I told Philip everything. It made very dull telling, I assure you. And now he's taking you back to America? Yes. You're happy about this, of course. I couldn't be happier. I love Switzerland, but after all, America's my real home. Well, perhaps it's for the best. These dreams may have some associations for you here in Switzerland. If so, I think it's quite possible you may leave these behind too. At least we hope so. Well, that's certainly good news, Doctor. Dr. Farrell. Yes? You don't believe there's really any connection between my dreams and my marriage, do you? No, no, I... I merely noted the coincidence. But several times you suggested Philip come to see you. Why? I do that in most cases, Mrs. Justin. Sometimes the husband can be very helpful. Well, I know he always intended to come, but he had such a short time in Switzerland, and he loves to go up in the mountains alone. Mrs. Justin... 
Your husband came to see me two weeks ago. Oh, yes, I, I believe it slipped my mind. Was it helpful, Doctor? I believe you've known your husband a very short time. Yes. We had what you call in America a whirlwind romance. Then whatever's causing these dreams occurred a long time before you met Philip Justin. Goodbye, Doctor. Bye, Mrs. Justin. And thank you for helping me. everything. Tickets, passports, money, smallpox certificates. What about customs declarations? Don't give them the on the plane. You'll have hours to fill them out. I'm too excited. What did I do with the tickets? You got them right in your hand. I can see you're going to be very useful to have around. Oh, you have no idea. I'm glad we'll be flying at night. We can neck all the way across the Atlantic. You don't have to wait that long. It used to be a gag I pulled at college. We would take a girl down to the airport, bus depot, station, and watch the train or plane pull out. And then we'd kiss the girl goodbye. Only she wouldn't be going anywhere. <laughs> but nobody would know that. All right, who was she? Oh, that was long ago. Come on, I told Dr. Farrell I confessed all to you. Now it's your turn. How was the session with Farrell? No change. Now he tells me the dreams are caused by something scandalous I did and then forgot. Well, aren't you worried, darling? I may have a perfectly dreadful past neither one of us knows about. I don't believe you ever went to a station to watch the train pull up. So smug. These Swiss boys know a few tricks, too. Yeah. Well, all they ever did to you was your root. First time I kissed you, your nose got in the way. Oh, Ooh, you're learning. Keep on teaching, Professor. awful. I forgot to have the initials and my luggage changed. <clears throat> oh, it'll get through customs anyway. But they're all marked SW. Your family might think we're not married. I don't have any family, Sheila. Well, you never told me that, Philip. So much I don't know about you. Doesn't matter. Not really. But I want to know everything you did before you met me. What you do, where you come from, how you got along without me all these years. All these years I've been looking for you. I try to get some sleep. All right. Philip. Yes? Why didn't you tell me you went to see Dr. Farrell? I did tell you. Don't you remember? No. I guess I didn't hear you. We're lost, aren't we? No. Oh. Now it's the right road. It's crazy. 
creepy looking. I wish we'd stayed in New York. You need a quiet place where you can rest for a couple of weeks. You make me sound like an invalid. Well, you did have that dream again last night. Yes. said you've never been in Florida before. How could you have seen it? I never saw it before, but that's the house. Oh, Philip, I'm frightened. It's an old, empty house. Why are you afraid of a house? I don't know. Whatever's inside, it's horrible. I don't know what it is. There's nothing to be afraid of. An empty house can't hurt you. Same house. You know that's impossible. Look, you dreamed of an old house. The first one you see reminds you of it. You simply made the transference in your mind. You've got to be sensible. You can't dream about a place you've never seen. It's exactly the same. Those trees, storm windows. That must be the attic. Every old house has an attic. Do we have to go in there? Yes. It'll be good for you. Once you realize there's nothing in there that can hurt you, the dream will go away. Beside, darling. I'll be with you every minute. I'm just in the new residence. Oh, you come to the wrong place. This house ain't never rented. It is now. Well, they would have told me about it. I've just told you we've rented the house. We're going to live here. Now you know. Lie down. husband took the house on short notice. I'm sure you'll be notified by mail in a day or two. <laughs> there ain't been no mail here for the last 17 years. It's been empty that long? Mm-hmm. Must have been a lovely home once. What happened to the people who lived here? They went away. One by one they went away, except me. Isn't it? Lonely for you? Lonely? No. It ain't lonely. I got my dog. You see, I'm waiting for them to come back. That's why I keep it like it was. For them. For whom? 
Well, the folks it belongs to. It's theirs. That, that's why I try to keep it looking nice. What was... What's their name? We carry the bags upstairs and we decide which bedroom we're going to use. This is the house. I know every step before I take it. I go up there. Along the railing to the left, there's a bedroom. Hideous wallpaper. Huge, awful looking flowers on it. You never mentioned going into a bedroom in your dream. No, I didn't. Maybe I see it as I go past. The door is closed. Why do you dream about it? What does it mean to you? It means I'm going to die here. Philip, take me away. I can't stay here. I can't. I'll go out of my mind. All right, darling. We'll go in. A can of gasoline. It isn't bad. Thanks, half full. Pulled out, the distributor cap is missing. John. Why? He tried to keep us from staying here. Why did he do it? I don't know. For some reason he changed his mind. Can't you repair it? I could probably fix the wires, but without the distributor cap, we're stuck here. on the mailbox. What? You asked me who used to live here. You can still see the name on the mailbox. Tierney. Why did they all leave? Why? <laughs> Nobody knows why they ever did anything. They was all the same. 
The whole family. Folks around here used to call them the, the Mad Tyrannies. Didn't you know that? No. Then how come you know the name? You didn't see the name on the mailbox. I watched you come. I don't know how I knew. Maybe I've been here before. A long time ago. No. I would have remembered you. I've always been here. If you'd been here before, I would have remembered. It's all vaguely familiar. Like... Like something that happened when you were a small child. What do you remember? I'm not sure. I can see myself as a little girl playing in the grass. There was a boy. He was older than I was. I think I was in love with him. I think he carved our initials on the trunk of a tree. A big old palm tree. It's all so vague. I don't know where it came from. I know every tree on this plantation. I would have seen them initials. Maybe it was someplace just like this. I thought I heard your voice. Jonah came back. Oh? Well, he's gone again. I tried to keep him talking till you came down. Did you ask him why he disabled the car? I was afraid to. He acts so queer. He's been living here alone too long. I'm sorry there's no coffee. None of the stoves in here work. Oh, this is fine. Philip. Yes? Did you bring that gun with you? Yes, in my suitcase. Why? I don't know. That, that dog frightens me. So does Jonah. I'll just feel better knowing you have it. I took a walk. I tried to find you. And then that dog came after me. He's out there. Stay here. Jonah! <coughs> Light up! Jonah! Get this animal out of here and tie him up. 
I had him locked up in the cell. Somebody must have let him out. If anybody let him out, it was you. Now take him back and tie him up. If he gets loose again, I'll shoot him. Yes, sir. Come on, Jagger. Come with you. Everything's all right now. Don't worry. What ever made you go prowling around in the dark? There was someone looking in that window. A hideous, inhuman face. You weren't here. I was so frightened. It had to be Jonah. There's no one else around here for miles. For some reason, he's trying to scare us away from here. Why? He disabled our car to keep us here. I don't know. I'm going to find out right now. Philip. Don't worry. Just lock the door. You'll be safe here. I'll be back in five minutes. All right. But take your gun. I can handle it. Coffee this morning. Here we go. Ah, drink this, huh? Slept badly? Dream again. I wasn't dreaming. I found the door to the attic. I told you all these old houses have attics. I recognized it the instant I saw it. It was just like in my dream. Was it? I don't remember. But you must remember. Don't you see, once you understand what it all means, you'll never have the dreams again. Is that why you brought me to this house, Philip? Darling, I brought you here for rest and to get over the dreams. But why to this house? How did you know where it was? I didn't even know. How did you find it? It 
It's only the same house in your imagination. You're lying! Why are you doing this to me? Why? Finish your breakfast, I'll be downstairs. W. Sheila Wayne. Snell. I own this house and I'd appreciate an explanation of what you're doing here. My husband rented it. Then in that case, I'd like to speak with your husband, if I may. He should be back any moment. He's gone for a walk. Is something wrong, Mr. Snell? You said your husband rented the house, Mrs. Uh... Mrs. Justin. Yes, that's right. He rented it. From whom? I'm not sure. From a realtor, I suppose. This house is not in the hands of a realtor, and no one has approached me to rent it. And I wouldn't be interested in any case. I believe my caretaker informed you of that last night. Well, yes, he did. I'm sure my husband can explain satisfactorily when he comes back. Mrs. Justin, I don't want to appear to be unpleasant, but I'm not interested in explanations. You and your husband will have to leave this house immediately. Yes, I'm terribly sorry. You see, Mrs. Justin, the house has been closed up for a good many years. It's not even fit to live in. It's not safe. As a matter of fact, the electricity's been turned off. So if you fell through the floor or stumbled on the stairs, I'd be liable. I'm sure you understand. Of course. As a matter of fact, we, we started to leave last night, but, but the car... Our car wouldn't start. Well, I'm not very much of a mechanic, but what seems to be the trouble? My husband said the distributor had been stolen. Stolen? By whom? There's no one around here for miles except Jonah, my caretaker. And I can assure you he wouldn't do anything to delay your departure. On the contrary, he did his best to frighten us away. Oh? Well, all I can suggest is that you get in the car and drive with me to the nearest garage and have a mechanic sent back. I can't go until my husband comes. Mrs. Justin. The idea is for both of you to leave. Suppose we refuse to leave. What are you going to do about it? 
Philip. Good Lord, I had no idea. Your wife said that her name I was... ask you how you intend to make us leave. Why on earth would you want to stay in an old place like... You could run us off, huh? With an axe. I simply said that the house was dangerous. Naturally, if you want to stay here under these conditions, you're perfectly welcome. <laughs> well, I'm not being a very good host. It's been many years, Philip. We've lost touch with you. Where have you been? In Europe. Oh. Switzerland. Philip and I were married recently. In Lausanne. I hope I'm not interrupting our honeymoon if I stay a few days. Now that I'm here, I thought I'd look the old place over and see if there's anything that could be done with it. You don't mind, do you, Philip? It's yours, isn't it? I'm afraid most of that went over my head. Philip never mentioned that he knew you or that you owned the house. What did he say? Nothing, really. He must have given you some explanation for bringing you back here. Back here? Then I have been here before. I... I don't know. But you said back here. That's what you meant. You know I've been here before, don't you? Don't you? This is a place you could never forget. You do remember being here, don't you, Mrs. Tierney? I'm not sure. Why did you call me Mrs. Tierney? Did I? I met Mrs. Justin, of course. S.W. and P.T. Philip Tierney. That's his name, isn't it? Look at me, Mr. Snell. I want to know it's true, isn't it? Yes. Philip is the last of the Tierneys. The last of the mad Tierneys. That's what they're called, isn't it? And those initials on that old tree, S.W., Sheila Wayne, those are my initials, aren't they? He carved them when I was just a little girl. Don't you remember any of it? It's all so vague. It, it all comes back to me in little bits and pieces. I try to fit them together and they fade away. I was ill in, in a sanitarium in Switzerland for a long time. My memory always seems to start in the sanitarium. Before that, it, it's like a thick mist. What does it all mean? These are questions for your husband to answer, Mrs. Tierney, not me. I wish I could help you, but I can't. It would have been better if you had never left Switzerland never have come to this house. There's something evil here. And bad for Philip. He wasn't like this in Switzerland. What is there about this house that makes him like he is? Possibly only Philip knows. I urge you for your own safety to leave this house at once. Take my car if you like, but get away from here. Now. the truth, Philip. Why did you bring me to this house? For your own good. You 
knew I'd been here before. Yes, I knew. We lived here as children. I remember that last night after we'd been here a little while. It was all so hazy, I couldn't quite make out the face of the boy who carved our initials on the tree. I was in love with you then. That must be why I fell in love with you so quickly in Switzerland. I told Dr. Farrell we had a whirlwind romance. It wasn't really. I'd been in love with you for, for years and years. I love you, Sheila. Do you? I love you very, very much. Why did you bring me to this place? To this horrible, evil house? So you would get over the nightmares. They were destroying you, Sheila. In no time, they'd have you back in the sanitarium. Sanitarium? I was sent there because of my lungs. Wasn't I, Philip? No, darling. You're trying to tell me that... I was sent away to Switzerland because I was... insane? Sheila, you'd had a nervous breakdown. A nervous breakdown? I was seven years old. A child of seven doesn't have a nervous breakdown. I was insane, wasn't I? Sheila, there's nothing wrong with you now except those nightmares. I brought you here to regain your health. There's only one way to cure you. No, Philip. You must go up in that attic. I can't, I can't. There's something waiting for me up there. If I climb those stairs, I'll die. I know that. Darling, it's all in your imagination. I'll be with you every step of the way. Please, you must do this. Don't ask me to do that, Philip. I can't. I won't. November 4th, 1939. Born to Matthew and Bliss Tierney. Son Lawrence. Died November 4th, 1939. Born a daughter, Lydia. Died January 18th, 1920. Born a son, Samuel. Died November 4th, 1939. Born to Samuel and Anne Tierney. Son, Philip. Philip. The last of the mad Tierneys. Oh, Jonah. Just looking at the family Bible. It belonged to my husband's grandfather, didn't it? Did you know him? I knowed him. I knowed him all. Matthew Tierney had two sons and a daughter. They's all dead now. I, I can see that. Jonah, it says that Matthew and his sons Lawrence and Samuel all died on the same day. November 4th, 1939, at midnight. What happened, Jonah? Was there an accident, all of them dying at once? The strain died out, all except him. Philip, but, but what caused it? 
He's, he's seen death coming for him. Well, he was 84, and, and it was his time. Matthew was... Matthew died of old age, but... But Lawrence and, and Philip's father, they were both young men. He's seen what he had to do. The curse of the tyrannies was on him, and he could see it. He brought him into this world, and, and he took him out again before he died. You mean the old man? His two sons? He, he, he watched for it all the time they was growing up. He looked for it to show up, and, and it did, like in all the tyrannies. They, they was tainted. He knowed he had to wipe it out before he was taken. There was only one way. Blood. There was blood all over everything. The place run with the blood of the mad tyrannies. I, I took the axe out myself and buried it. Horrible. He done what he had to do. Then he laid down and died himself. But he missed one. Philip. Yeah. He was away up north. That's what saved him. And he's the last. He's come back because he knows he's got it too. He's marked like all the others. Don't believe it. I don't believe it. Go away, miss. Go away before it's too late. Ain't nothing you can do for him. I seen it in him just the same as in all the others. Yeah. taken care of it. I won't put up with carelessness. You know that. I know. I know. Mrs. Tierney might have been killed. Now look, you've been around here for a long time, and if you want to keep your home, you see that nothing goes wrong from now on. Do you understand? Philip. Philip. Get away from me. You're going to listen to me for once. I don't know what you're up to or why you ever came back here, but I can tell you this. You're only going to make matters worse for yourself. And maybe that's the way you like it. And tell me, why do you insist on pulling your wife down with you? How much more do you think she can stand? You've nearly driven her out of her mind now. Or is that what you're trying to do, Philip? What do you think I'm trying to do? Take her away from here at once if you've got any sense left. Are you so concerned about Sheila? Because if she stays in this house another night, she'll be a raving maniac. I'll drive her to town myself. Sheila stays here with me. Why? Because she has nightmares, Mark. Didn't she tell you that? She was going to a psychiatrist in Switzerland to find out what caused them. Doctor couldn't help her, but I can. I know exactly what to do. And when she's better, everything's going to be all right again. For her, for me, and for all the tyrannies, dead or alive. You'd hate that, wouldn't you, Mark? You've always hated the tyrannies. You're insane. You're really out of your mind. Who is it? It's Mark. I brought you some dinner.
must eat something. I can't. Where is my... Where is he? He went away about an hour ago, as soon as it was dark. You should eat something. He tried to kill me. It could have been an accident. I told you how old and rotten the house was. The chandelier probably just broke away. No, he was up there. If Jonah hadn't shouted at... Why? He said he loved me. I'm sure he does. But at other times, he's not responsible for what he does. You see, in a way, you were a threat to him. Philip is the last of the tyrannies, unless you have a child. And in his own tortured mind, he knows that this must never happen. Let me explain. With each generation, the wild strain and the tyrannies becomes not less, but more pronounced. Do you understand? Why did he marry me? Why doesn't he leave me? He loves you. You're his one hold on sanity, and at the same time, the one thing that, that's driving him to do what his grandfather did. I know. Jonah told me. I didn't want to believe it. I'm afraid it's true. You see, Sheila, Philip is my cousin. Yes. My mother was Lydia Tierney. She died in childbirth in 1925. I grew up here with Philip until he went up north to school. When the old man... Why didn't he... You mean, why didn't Grandfather kill me too? Oh, I don't know. I suppose it's... It's because uh, I really wasn't like a Tierney. I was a Snell. When I was growing up, I didn't understand it at the time. Grandfather Tierney was very hard on me, almost cruel. He must have decided I had escaped the curse of his line. He knew he was mad. I think he did. It came in spells. Well, he used to lock himself away in his room for days at a time. What will become of Philip? I don't know. I'm more concerned with what will become of you. You must leave here as soon as it's daylight. I take you away tonight, but my car's been disabled too. Couldn't we walk? No. It's 15 miles, and along those winding roads, we'd probably lose our way or wind up in the marshes. But that's better than staying here. No. He's outside somewhere, watching the house. You'll be safer here. Besides, Jonah and I are going to take turns standing watch outside your door. You may not get much sleep, but I can promise you nothing will happen to you. Thank you. Are you sure you don't want something to eat? Good night. Good night. Next, Rogan. I heard 
heard him scream. Jesse was... He fell over the railing up there. He must have been dead before he hit the bottom. Poor Jonah. He said the house was dangerous. What happened? The railing give way? No, it didn't. What was he doing prowling around in the dark? That's his job. He's the caretaker. Here. Put this on. Huh? You think we ought to move him? It's your house. I hate to leave him lying there. I suppose we'll have to call the police. Why? It was an accident. Wasn't it? That's not for us to say. Are you going to get in touch with him? I understand your car broke down. I thought you might fix it. I can try. Who's going to drive? She, she, she can't. I was merely suggesting that she might like to drive into town with me. This has been an awful shock for her. I'll go. Before the police will get here. It won't be tonight. He won't go to the police. He'll just keep on going. There's nothing else he can do. It's better that it's happened this way, my dear. You'll forget in time. came down to investigate. His body's gone. That's strange. Yes, isn't it? A dead man gets up and walks away. Maybe he wasn't dead. That's ridiculous. His neck was broken. You saw him. I didn't examine him. 
You did. Well, don't you think we ought to go look for the body? No. I think you should do what you started out to do. Go for the police. I don't want to get lost again. I don't know the roads around here. Somebody's got to go. How about you? Well, I can't. My car's broken down. I'll fix it. Besides, I don't want to leave Sheila here alone. She won't be alone, Mark. I'll be with her. You wait here a minute. I'll be right back. hidden Jonah's body, probably in the cellar. We've got to get word to the police. He won't go, and he won't let me take you with me. Well, couldn't we? No, he won't give us that much time. Have you still got his gun? Yes. All right, now listen carefully. There's a farmhouse about five miles from here. I can go there and get back in about 20 minutes. He'll expect me to be gone for hours. Now, when I leave this room, you lock the door. Use the gun if you have to. If you'd only wait till morning. No, this is what he wants us to do. If we stay in this house tonight, He'll finish his horrible job. Our only chance is to act faster than he does. Do you think you can do it? I'll try. Good. You guard the fire escape with a gun, and I think you can hold him off until I get back. Good luck. you, darling. Everything will be all right. I love you, Sheila. I'm going to take you away. You've got to trust me. Trigger, Sheila, and it'll be the end of the tyrannies. Don't make me do it, Philip. I don't want to. Pull the trigger, Sheila. You go downstairs and write the final entry in the family Bible. Philip Tierney died here and now, the last of the mad tyrannies. I can't. Do whatever you want to, Philip. I don't care. I'm your enemy if that. If that's what your mind tells you, then go ahead and do it. You could have killed me. Why didn't you? I don't know. Yes, I do know. Because I love you. So many years ago, long before you carved our initials on that tree, I can't remember any further back. I loved you. We met in Switzerland. I didn't know it, but it was the same love. That's why I married you, Philip. That's why I could never hurt you. I don't want to hurt you either. But you feel you must. Is that it, Philip? Let me help you. 
don't look away. I want to help you. Everything's going to be all right now. Let me help you. Tell me how. Will you do anything I ask? Anything? Anything. What do you want me to do? Come with me right now. All right. Here. Take this. Please, I want you to have it. Just an attic, full of dust and cobwebs. When you were a little girl, it was your favorite place to play in rainy days. You remember. This trunk full of old clothes. You used to dress up in them. Remember, darling? No. It'll all come back to you. Believe me, it will. It'll all come back to you. Everything. Don't open the door! I can't even look! If you want to kill me, kill me here, but don't torture me! child should see. Your mind locked it away so you'd never see it again. You knew it was there. And you had to dig it out. I searched for years. I found you in Lausanne. But the secret was hidden in your subconscious. Only you and the person who used the axe knew what really happened up here. I had to dig it out. You caused the dreams to start. You took me to Dr. Farrell. And then when nothing else worked, you brought me here. You want to know what happened that night, Philip? I remember now. lived in a little house by a stream, my father and I. He was a caretaker. 
you were one of the family. I remember. They used to let me play up here on rainy days. It rained that day. I forgot my doll. And I woke up late at night and crept back in the house to get it. I came up here. And then I heard someone coming up the stairs. I hid under this bed. And then I saw them. Your father and your Uncle Lawrence. And then he killed them. Who did? Who was it? With the axe. The blood spurted clear across the room. It was all over me. It was all over me. Was it my grandfather? You must have seen who did it. Was it my grandfather? No. It was Jonah. That's the only way it could have happened. Why? They didn't tell me much about it. Jonah married my Aunt Lydia. Lydia? She was Mark's mother. Yes. Jonah was Mark's father. They tell me Lydia was a headstrong girl. Rebellious. My grandfather never had much time for anyone but his sons. Lydia, in order to get attention, threw herself at the caretaker. A stable hand named Jonah Snell. When my grandfather found out what happened, he made them get married to give the child a name. That he had died giving birth to Mark. My grandfather brought them into the house. He raised Mark. But beyond that, he wouldn't have anything to do with them. Jonah must have brooded and plotted for years. He knew he couldn't have the family name and fortune for himself. But he thought he could get them for his son. He must have been insane. He wasn't then, he was later. He also knew that when my grandfather died, the estate would pass to Lawrence and then to Samuel, my father. After that, to the next oldest relative. Mark is three years older than I am. The night my grandfather died, Jonah saw his chance. I don't know how he lured them up here or why he chose this attic. But he slaughtered them. And he put the axe in a dead man's hand. So Mark inherited everything. The plantation, the money, the estate. That's when I stopped using the name of Tierney. I swore that I'd never use that name again until people could stop whispering it behind closed doors. What did you do with the gun? I don't know. I, I lost it. Get over there. Were you successful, Philip? Yes, I'm sure that it did. Now the question is, what are we going to do about it? The truth has to come out, Mark. Grandfather's name has been stained for 17 years. You're going to clean it up. They're both dead. What difference does it make? None to you. You're a Snell. Yes, you never let us forget it, did you? We were poor white trash, and we dared link our name with the tyrannies. The pure aristocratic tyrannies. If you look under the surface, you'll find that they're as common as the rest of us. Have you forgotten Lydia? She liked to play in the stables with a hair job. She was your mother, Mark. Now look, I'm willing to believe you were too young to know what Jonah was going to do. If you renounce all claims to the estate and go away, we'll call it even. Very generous of you. Always the fine tyranny gesture. I hate pure nobility. It isn't that, Mark. 
It's just that I'm tired of hatred and revenge. I want only what's mine. But if you refuse, I'll fight you in every court in the land and I'll win. Yes, I knew what he was going to do when he went there that night, but I didn't try to stop it. I wanted it just like he did. Well, he got it for me and I'm going to keep it. If you want to fight, well, let's have it now. <laughs> to clean things up here. We could go to Lausanne if you wanted to. Mm -mm. They sent me there, didn't they? Yes. Even that madman Jonah couldn't bring himself to murder a child. He knew that your mind had blocked out what it had seen. So he set up a trust fund for you, sent you away. Forgot about you. Philip, why did Mark throw Jonah over the railing? The old man must have brooded a long time over what he'd done. He wanted to stop any more killings, I'm sure. He even warned you about the chandelier. Mark was afraid he was going to confess, so he killed him. Come on. We left the old house. Silent and foreboding. A place of horror and death. It was truly haunted. Thank <laughs> you.